Now we can do it. Now we can start. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each and every day of the work week. So I go in to make breakfast this morning. And then I hear an explosion on the floor. And uh, it's, I think it's a vase or something like that. That's in a billion pieces. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Kind of slowed uh, your old pal easy down a bit. Um, so that kind of messed things up. I think I would have been late anyway, because at like 10 minutes before, uh, it, it's not a good idea to then be making the cocoa wheats. Kenny with a fantastic question. What's cocoa wheats? I think it can best be uh, described as a uh, farina. Okay. I think that's an old school version of hot cereal. Hey, G, your farina, your, your wheat farina. Also there uh, can be included in that is cream of wheat. That was uh, one of the products that had like a black guy on the front of it, like a happy chef. He's like the old, the, he's like, I'm, I'm going to deliver this food to the master and it's going to be so much fun. I love being an indentured servant. Here you go, boss. Which is bullshit. For the longest time, a lot of the foods that we would eat would have a, uh, a real happy slave on the on the label. What a crock of shit. You remember like uh, Aunt Jemima? The uh, 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 syrup? With the uh, happy black slave? Fucking flying here. Jesus, get the fuck away from me. Or Uncle Ben's, the rice guy. Here's the rice, master. Hope you like it. I'm so happy to be serving you the rice. It's ridiculous. And then uh, even on the Aunt Jemima one, I think it, um, hang on. Fucking fly. On the Aunt Jemima one, it, uh, I think the family of Aunt Jemima said, no, 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 no. Don't ban Aunt, J- Aunt Jemima. We love it. So that really put a fly in the ointment on that deal. I don't know. I think it's stupid. Come on now. Uh, but that's kind of like a regular start to the day here. <laughs> Nate says all slaves talk like Lomas Brown. You go with the uh, you go with the uh, farina with milk, and then you. Uh, someone asked, do you put sugar in it? Oh, hell yes, you have to. And then I put like protein powder in it too because my doctor said, easy, you got to go, you got to go protein with your uh, carbohydrate. Otherwise, you're just going to spike your sugar and you're not going to be a happy camper. I go, okay, great. So that's what's up. That's how I start the day. And the way this has worked and the way it will continue to work, I know there was some folks who were like, Easy, you got to give us more descriptions of the things you're eating during the day. Um, well, maybe, uh, but don't forget, I, I do that on the show here. Uh, as, as Eric continues to plummet his weight downward in a historically healthy way, I have now plotted it out. I'm breaking my own rule and looking in the future. Um, and that is uh, 28 pounds should be behind me by December. Uh, Aram is getting a little too hyper-focused on the ultra specifics of what each and every one of us do, particularly me. For some reason, when I uh, pick on people, Aram then thinks that he should, like, fight back. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. 
but I, I've, I've been very successful and very strict with myself uh, since this all began. And um, I'm doing very, very well for myself. And for some reason, I think you're trying to punch holes in what I'm doing. And I'm not exactly sure why. I suspected it in your tone of your posts on fraudulent fat fugs, which, by the way, you don't even need to be there. You're in fantastic shape. I'm not even sure why you're contributing. Uh, if you had a place to be there, it might be to help people like Amanda, who uh, uh, can't seem to do anything but give us excuses on a consistent level. So I'm not sure uh, what you're getting at uh, with with your tone and aggressiveness. Fact of the matter is, Amanda's in a, a life and death struggle. Poor thing. And she asked me specifically to handle her the way that I have. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I mean, if you're going to tear it in fraudulent fat fugs into like a way to make this adversarial, uh, I, I'm not biting. I'm not biting on that. I'm not sure. I, I don't want your, I don't want anybody's support. He says, I'll be more supportive of you. That's not why I'm there. I'm there for people who actually are fighting a life and death battle. Who their lives depend on them losing a lot of weight over a long period of time. And uh, everyone has been doing a fantastic job. Um, you might say, how can you possibly say that easy? You've been ripping Amanda. Well, she's there. At least she's there. If she did not respond to my attacks on her, um, I mean, she's trying. Just she needs to try harder. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. Very, very important that you do this. Um, Kenny is... I read a post from Kenny. God bless him. His back is feeling so much better. He can move around. I, Kenny, the most impressive thing about you, young man, is the fact that um, you have con you are considerably less disgusting while recovering from a major, major injury to your back. You should be 100 pounds heavier if old Kenny was doing what he's been doing. Amanda says she's down six. That's great and uh, a miracle. Things that are less impressive than Amanda losing six. Sully Sullenberg landing on the Hudson. The Cubs winning the World Series. And anything else that you can think of that's miracle related. Reason why I say that is because I, as I suspected, uh, Amanda was being fraudulent when I was like, Hey, where are you? Where every time you check in, it's full of sass and attitude. You should be dropping hints. See when you contribute to fraudulent fat fugs, you're helping the other people who are also trying to lose weight. Okay. So we hear nothing from her. Nothing. So I'm like, Amanda. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ. I don't know how to wait. Check in every fucking day. Fuck this. Well, you know what I did? And then she's giving me all sorts of bullshit attitude. I'm like, what the fuck? God damn. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing what you asked. You asked me to do this. You can't ask somebody for this type of assist and then when it happens, get mad. Good God. That's horrible. Stand by. I got to drink this coffee. Make no mistake, though. As I've said to you, Sunday evening meal is reward. And motherfucker, I earned that shit last night. 
So I hunkered down. Taco bar. Taco bar with dessert. So I I don't even try um, to do anything that is um, uh, like a, a normal person's eating on the Sunday evening family dinner. I behaved all fucking week. All week. Walk my ass off. Walk my ass off last night, too, by the way. I had already met my fitness goal for the day yesterday, and I went around the block again. I got people in the neighborhood noticing. How many times are you going to go around? I'm like, yeah, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Uh, on Friday? Saturday, I was 181. And I did check my chart. It was 186.4 at the doctor's office. All right. Perfect. Tomorrow is 21 days in. 21 days in. Last night, the uh, the taco bar was just intensely awesome. I mean, I'm serious. I ate a, a burrito that was the size of a football. And then I had a, uh, I made my own crunch wrap. You take the uh, flour tortilla, the soft, and you put the refried beans and, um, sour cream on it and like spread it. And then you put the hard shell in there and then load up the hard shell and then put the soft shell around it. And like, Oh my God. Fantastic. Murdered that. And then I had a brownie about the size of this folder. And, uh, we were in business. So great. And, uh, kids were screaming like madmen. My uh, uh, grandkids are over, and uh, it was it goes like at my house. It goes from quiet to loud in an instant. And I, I tell you what, I am all about it. When there's chaos in my house, dogs going bananas, kids screaming, I'm like music to my ears. I miss those days. Now my son and my daughter-in-law. I think they're all waiting for like somebody to go, oh yeah, like give them a dirty look because the kids are going bonkers. But I'm like, no, it doesn't bother me at all because I know at the end of the day, I will be here with the NFK and Diana. You guys do have to go home so I can, I can muscle my way through this. It was fantastic. All about it. Um, Even got a chance to bust out the baseball gloves. Uh, in the street, playing catch, playing basketball. Oh, it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I tell you what. So um, back at it, back on the horse today. And uh, things are going fine. Hope hope things are going well with you. I just got a request from uh, audience member Matt. He wants in. So he'll be sending along a, hey, let me in. I want in on this group. I want in. Friday. I was out in Detroit at the Magic Bag for Who Are These Podcasts Live. And man, what a fun time. Okay. I uh, I can't stress this enough. If you want to know how, the, how this works, the history of this is like seven years ago. Some dude sat down and he said, I am going to review podcasts and... um. That's all I'm I'm doing in a podcast form, my own podcast. And, uh, well, he had no one, no audience, none. It's, it's different when you do it the way Carl did it, because I mean, I had a built in audience from radio. Carl does it with nothing. And now he's got 2,500 followers on Patreon. He just bought a second house in Florida. Uh, His show is incredibly popular. He has several spinoff shows, including Who Are These Broadcasters, featuring your old pal EZ, Carl, and Christian Blatt, heard once a week, every Tuesday. Um, And does live shows all across the country. So he does this live show in Detroit, second year in a row that he's done at the same place. I uh, was fortunate enough to be invited to help roast the show, The Osbournes, which we talked about that on Patreon, a little preview about what they do on that stupid show. But uh, so I found out when I got there, 
Yeah, actually, let me let me back up. Let me back up. No, no, no. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to tell you this story. I'm in the lobby, and uh, I I'm kind of not really used to the fact that people that are there for this show they actually recognize me. I haven't been recognized publicly in a long, long time. Uh, you know, it kind of dried up with the old radio career, but not here. And I was, it was such a thrill. And those people were, were so kind to say, oh my God, I love you on the show and things like that. When you're a, a person like me who is driven by ego and things like this, uh, admittedly, it, uh, it really was a fantastic feeling. So people were just awesome. I got to meet a lot of great, great people. Um, too many stories to mention, but one in particular, this guy comes up to me and he's kind of giddy. And he goes, oh my God, Eric Zan. I go, hey, how you doing? He goes, I listen to you and I'm thinking to myself, maybe he's, um, uh, he recognizes me from Grand Rapids or, or I don't know. And he goes, I listen to you on the Insane Asylum radio show in Northern Michigan. Now, I've been doing the show for like four years. And I have never had anyone ever approach me and say that they've listened to the Insane Asylum. Not a one. Okay? The show is on midnight to 2 a.m. on a uh, rock radio station way up north. That, I mean, there's nobody lives up there. It's a miracle that anybody even listens to me. And I go, what? He goes, yeah, I listened to that show. I go, you are the first person that has, his name was Ryan, first person that has ever said anything to me about that show, ever. Uh, people that listen to the podcast, because I make the show available here on Patreon, I go, well, they, they hear it. Um, not a ton, but some. You got to be fucking kidding me. He goes, yep. I go, oh, Jesus. I go, so you live way up there? He goes, yep. So Carl draws all these people from uh, faraway places to meet in Detroit, and uh, it was spectacular. Uh, Cardiff Electric was there, and uh, Al Harible with his stupid puppets, and, uh, and oh, my God. Dr. Steve, I was on stage with Dr. Steve. But one of the things that stood out to me, uh, I have to give you a little background here. I want to share this with you. Uh, way back, I think like 12 years ago. So some of you may not remember this. This viral news story happened. There are often homeless people asking for change at freeway exit ramps. But recently, there's been this guy with an interesting sign at I-71 and Hudson Street. Uh, Ohio. His handwritten sign says he has the God-given gift of a great voice. Hey, I'm going to make you work for your dollar. Say something with that great radio voice. When you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after these words. <laughs> And don't forget, tomorrow morning is your chance to win a pair of tickets to see this man live in concert. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, when I was 14 years old, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. When I was 14, I kind of listened to one of our area radio announcers. And uh, I went as a field trip to go meet the guy, and he looked nothing like what he sounded like. So I asked him about that, and he said to me, listen, radio is defined theater of mind. And so when he said theater of mind, I just said, well, hey, I can't be an actor. I can't be an on-air personality. But the voice just became something of, uh, of a development over years, and I went to school for it. And then alcohol and drugs and a few other things became a part of my life. And I got two years clean, and I'm trying hard to get it back. And hopefully somebody from one of these television or radio say, hey, I need a voiceover, or I, I need something. So, you know, I'm hoping one day... Watch Family Guy, weeknights at 7.30 on Fox 28. Anything, but that, that's what it is. And, and I love radio. If you're... That is, uh, that's Ted Williams. The man with the golden voice. Um, that story went viral. And he had no idea. Well, let me, uh, I'm, I'm jumping around. I, I apologize. But, uh. This is uh, 
this is me with with Ted yesterday and or on uh, Friday, and I couldn't believe it. Ted freaking Williams is sitting next to me. Uh, his story is wonderful. I tell you what, uh, and he was brought in. Carl and Drew hired Ted to be the guy to be the uh, dude who introduces whenever someone new comes on stage. And uh, so he's uh, he's clean and sober now, thank God. But uh, I got a chance to talk with Ted for quite a bit. He's doing a podcast, actually. Uh, more on that later on. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty great to sit down with him. And uh, Ryan says that's awesome. He was like early YouTube viral, so his story went crazy. All right, and he uh, he got a job right away, and he got like a big contract, and then I think he started doing drugs again. I think he got all fucked up again because he wasn't quite healthy, you know? And um, then he eventually has turned it around and is uh, is doing very well. It was nice to meet him. He had a, uh, a friend slash assistant who was with him named uh, Scott Anthony, who's a, a comic as well. And uh, we're talking about um, his podcast. And someone says, hey, uh, and pointed this guy, Scott, who runs his show to me. He goes, uh, he says, Scott, are you making any money with Ted? No. See him. So they come up to me. He comes up to me. I go, yeah, so what's going on? He goes, yeah, well, we don't know how to make any money. I go, well, what are you doing? He goes, well, we're on YouTube every day. I go, well, is anybody watching? He says, yeah. Now I'm thinking like a few hundred. I look, and it's like 85,000 people that watched his video, one of his videos. I'm like, well, yeah, you you, you should be making... What the fuck? Did you not, did you sign up? Did you, uh, cause this, this is a, it isn't like you just make a video and suddenly money flies in from heaven. There's some things you have to do. There is. Yeah. You got to build a Google AdSense account. You have to, uh, give your tax information. You have to, um, put in a bank, a bank account. And then, yeah, that's about it. It's just, the money just flies in. But have you done all those things? No, we didn't know we had to. God, Jesus Christ. I got one here. Reach out to me. We'll get the ball rolling here. There's plenty of ways for... Ted should be making fucking money doing this shit. The fuck you guys are doing? Uh, Cole says it sounds like his podcast would be perfect for WATP. They may have reviewed it. I'm not sure. I know I know. Drew did. Drew and Mike did. But, uh... By the way, things went... Um, fairly well with uncle drew for those of you who don't know uh uncle drew is uh our pal saint gaslight's uncle yes that joe saint gaslight's uncle is uncle drew of the drew and mike show i walk up to carl and i go Hey, dude, this is before Drew gets there. I go, this might get weird. And I started to give him the background and he goes, Drew told me. I go, oh, how did that go? He goes, you're fine with Drew, but Drew's sister might want to have a word with you. I'm like, is she here? No. And that would be Joe's mother. So I'm like, God knows what he's told these people. Now, um, he knows his side of the story. I know his side of the story. And I also know the other side of the story. You know, from the uh, half dozen women who've reached out to me. So I would guess that what he's telling his loved ones is much different than the accounts of the half dozen or so women. But anyway, I didn't really get, I didn't really speak any more about it with Carl. Wasn't the time or the place and he didn't ask. 
So I was like, well, we'll see what's up. And uh, Drew comes walking up to me. He goes, hey, Eric. I go, hey, Drew. And I said, you going to punch me? And I, I was serious. Is he are you implying are you pissed off? And he goes, ha, ha, no. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, good. Ah, oh, good. Um, yeah, I would, I would hate for him to be pissed off at me. Um, if he did want to discuss it, I, I would have then gotten into, gone into greater detail, but it would have taken too long and it just wouldn't have been appropriate. We were all there to have fun for God's sake, but, uh, it was referenced. Um, and that's, and that's where it was. We, we, uh, uh, it, it continues on as an acquaintance relationship as it should. He's got a good group of people over there. He did a great job and I enjoyed spending time with him. Um, uh, yeah, I think that was it. That's about all I have to report about the big, who are these podcasts event? You must go, you must attend this next time. Uh, I had a great, great time with that group. If you're in the area, you must make the trip over if they uh, if they do the show again at the magic bag really really fun fantastic um all right as we welcome you in to a fantastic edition a monday version of the eric saint show podcast so glad that you are here uh nikki says the whole show was great i enjoyed listening to it this weekend it's something you have to watch though, because especially the clips that I threw together were there was a visual side to them. And I think you can only, um, get that when you are subscribed to his pay, his, um, his Patreon. Yes. All right. Now moving on the freaking lions, son of a bitch. Um, we had a real vibe of same old lions in this game. I'm not understanding head coach Dan Campbell when he suggests that the defense played great. They did not. I love Dan Campbell, but you can't start your presser by saying the defense played great. They didn't play great at all. The game was awesome. It was back and forth. And the fact that the Lions were down 10 points with like five and a half minutes to go. And they scored 10 straight to end the game to tie it. And then who knew that the game would be decided on the fucking coin toss because Seattle won the toss. They get the ball. I've still never understood this, this rule about if the offense scores the touchdown, the game is over. I always thought that that was bullshit. You, the other team should get a chance to score. Um, but that was it, you know. Defense stunk. Offense is pretty damn good. Nate says if Geno Smith goes for 325 yards, your te- your defense sucks. Uh, well, yeah, but Geno Smith had a uh, spectacular uh, year last year. And uh, so he is. Uh, he is a, a become a bona fide player now. He's not a pilot. He's not like some lucky one and done. He's he's done very well for himself. I think he might have won comeback player of the year or something like that last year. A brutal game too. A lot of people got hurt in that one. Uh, but the thing a lot of people may be talking about is when Geno Smith got called for intentional grounding. You know, and um, the uh, the referee was doing the, uh, what do you call it? The announcement of the penalty. And while he's doing the announcement of the penalty, Geno Smith starts talking to the ref. He starts like pleading his case to the guy. The ref drops this. Intentional grounding, offense number seven. I'm talking to America here. Excuse me. It's a 10 yard penalty. And I'm talking to America here. Excuse me. It's a 10 yard penalty and a loss of down. Second down. That is the best line I've ever heard out of a 
official. We'll get to the penalty in a minute. He just told Geno Smith, I'm talking to America. Intentional grounding. <laughs> oh, God. But, man, I was bummed. Motherfucker. You know, it sucks that they lost. The problem is people who haven't drank the Kool-Aid are quick to take uh, people like uh, me and rub my face in dog shit. And that, and that hurts. That really hurts. You know, it, it just comes, it all comes crashing down this deflating feeling after, after going to Kansas city and winning that game, just fuck it all up at home. You assholes. Stevie says, typical Lions, everyone got all hyped up over nothing, including myself. No shit. At the end of the day, they're one and one. They should be two and oh. Everybody should be losing their shit right now. At this point, anything less than at least one playoff win is a massive letdown. Massive letdown. I hate this so much when that happens. And I've gotten to a point now where um, I absolutely don't even do anything. I don't sit down to watch it. I'm, I'm literally walking around the house with my phone. I'm taking the dogs for a walk with my phone. I never just sit down and watch because I'm not to a point where I can sacrifice hours to just watch it like that. Patrick says the line's going to be fine. Tyler says it's just one game. They should have won that, but they still played well enough to get it to overtime at least. I don't know, man. With the Lions, it's like when they win that first game, it's like one extreme of emotion, and then typical Lions fan, they lose. It's Now it's the other extreme. It is, it's got, you could have a college course on the uh, neurotic nature of a Detroit Lions fan. You can analyze a group of 10, 10, 20 Lions fans and and you can do a whole case study on them. Call of Duty. Last week's Super Bowl, this week's snowplow. I don't know what snowplow means. It's fucking horrible. So pissed. At the Lions game, though, some guy was uh, doing uh, doing some sexting with his significant other. And someone else behind him has uh, picked up on it and zoomed in. If you're in a stadium, you want to be very, very careful about your texts. Because anybody behind you could be checking that deal out. This guy... According to Barstool, the story, the Lions may have lost today, but this guy is about to have a night. I bet you want to see this, don't you? Uh, Let's see. Give me a few. I'm going home after this, she says. Guy says, okay. Girl says, then I'm fingering myself for a while. You've got my pussy throbbing. Guy says, if you can't squirt, then just video yourself. All right. I just realized I got to kick the group on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube off because I'm probably going to get some kind of fucking fine here. This is horrible. That's some serious trash talk. All right, for you folks on Facebook, Twitter, or X, and YouTube, uh, thank you very much for being here. The rest of the show is available. Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live, or download the Twitch app and search Eric Zane Live if you want the rest of that shit. I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Uh, Try it out for free for seven days, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Seven days free. You're going to love it. You're going to love this. I put a ton of time into it. We've got uh, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. We're going to do a Who Are These episode this week. 
not to mention uh, the Insane Asylum, the daily Patreon bonus, hours of material for you to sift through. Try it out for free for seven days, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. What I'm doing right now, the audio will be available for you wherever you download shows. The Eric Zane Show podcast is free wherever you download shows. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost IT. All right, now back to this juicy text uh, between these two. My God. Kyler says, bad time for a Lions game, Mel Tucker. All right. Now, I'm a huge fan of that type of trash talk. Okay, if I even was saying any of those words that are in that text to the queen of the forest, she's going to slug me. Uh, That is not in the playbook. Now, would I love that? Well, of course. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean that everybody would. I would. But that's just not happening. The queen of the forest, that is just not her game. She would beat the shit out of me if I started talking to her like that. Uh Uh-uh. In fact, if there's any type of talking whatsoever, shh, shh, you're wrecking it, shh. All right, page two. Uh... Then I'm fingering myself for a while. You've got my pussy throbbing. Uh, He says, if you can't squirt, then just video you pissing. (laughs) Oh, God. Now that I can't, I can't get behind that. Well, she is. She says that she's having a squirt fest. Now he's saying he wants her to pee on him. All right, this is really weird now. Uh, Yeah, this is uh, right next to the guy with the Hutchinson jersey. Then at the end, he says, I want to come over after this game. But of course, he spells come C-U-M. Jesus, this guy. She says, I want you looking up at me while I watch you eat my, yeah. My God. It's a lot going on there. Uh, Joke of the day goes to Kyler for bad time for a Lions game. Mel Tucker. That's awesome. Which, by the way, Michigan State, this is so strange to me. Michigan State has announced that they are planning to investigate the source of the leak in the Mel Tucker investigation. By the way, this guy cannot take a picture without looking like a deranged uh, he's like a black version of, um, did you ever see no country for old men? Uh, the, uh, character Anton Chigurh, the, the, the dude with the bull cut who kills everybody with the, with the thing that they use to kill cows in the slaughterhouse. He's the black version of Anton Chigurh. Call it. Call what? Call it. Heads or tails. I don't have anything to lose. You have everything to lose. Uh, Mel Tucker. Michigan State is trying to find out um, like how the, how this story leaked. And I'm like, 
Well, first of all, it's a damn good thing it did because you weren't actually making it known. You've been Michigan State can't get out of its own way. Everything they do is uh, has such horrible optics. Here we are, so soon, uh, so short amount of time removed from Nasser, with all of that bullshit, where the uh, uh, lack of anything led to young women being molested by that guy. Lack of um, um, uh, the fact that they took so long to investigate and they essentially covered that shit up. Okay. Lawsuits galore. You'd think that uh, when you, at least Penn State, you know, made a real effort to, uh, you know, uh, be open with the public. Not so at Michigan State, this pile of shit athletic department in school when the story about Mel Tucker started to percolate in December. Uh, They didn't say shit. They concluded their Title IX investigation in July, and they still didn't say anything. It was only by accident. It was at some, uh, it wasn't by accident. Somebody actually blew the whistle to USA Today, and that led to them approaching Brenda Tracy, who then talked. That's the only reason why this came out. And now Michigan State is less concerned with Tucker and more concerned with who actually told. Who cares who told? Are you are you concerned about who told because it makes you look bad? Why didn't you just say something initially? You wouldn't have had this problem in the first place if you said, yes, we have an accusation of sexual harassment by Mel Tucker. We are looking into it until further notice, until this is resolved. Uh, Mel Tucker is uh, uh, taking a leave of absence from the team. You didn't do shit. Now, here we are in the middle of the football team. The team gets uh, black Anton Chigurh pulled out from under them. He's gone. They bring in some coach nobody's ever heard of to fill in, and they, oh, God, what the fuck happened against Washington? They were demolished. Not that they wouldn't have been demolished if uh, if Tucker was there, but Michigan State's the laughing stock of college football right now. So embarrassing. It's hard to believe that that school at one point had uh, like a respectable football program. They, they were at least respectable with D'Antonio. Fuck. They had Nick Saban on that team. I bet he barely remembers that, Nick Saban. Which, by the way, Alabama barely got by, like, what was it? Some high school that they played? Well, they they won, but it was such a shitty win that they they, uh, fell in the polls somehow. I know one person who's upset about that. That would be Linda. Tyler says they're handling the leak investigation the way they should have handled the accusation to begin with. He adds, I bet the leak investigation will be very quick versus the Tuck Came investigation. That has taken almost one year. School spokeswoman Emily Garant confirmed Sunday that the school plans to investigate the leak. Like, who gives a shit, you know? Brenda Tracy's attorney, Karen Truskowski, said last week that her client's name was disclosed by an outside party, and that triggered their cooperation with a USA Today report that exposed explicit details. So basically, USA Today said, hey, we know it's you. Can we get you to talk? Because if we can't, we're going to go to report and it'll be like we reached out to Brenda Tracy and had no comment. She had no comment. So they were, they were made away aware because of the leak. Thank God. I'm telling you, if you ever want to get anything done, all I got to do is tell the press. If it's juicy enough of a story, they'll do it. Tracy, an activist and rape survivor said Tucker sexually harassed her during a phone call in April, 22 Eight months later, she filed a complaint with the school's Title IX office, and the investigation was completed in July. A hearing is scheduled for the week of October 5 to determine if Tucker violated the school's sexual harassment and exploitation policy, and a ruling could take up to 60 days. You see, I don't know if um, 
it, see, Title IX is usually for a uh, intra-university scenario, and, and Brenda Tracy's not. She was contracted to teach the school about, teach the football players about no means no. But the optics of this look so bad because of why she was there, which I just said, to what en- ended up happening by the coach so soon after Nasser, and then it's covered up again. It's so ugly. So it, Tucker is supposed to, he's in uh, year number three of a $95 million deal. And if it's in this 10 year contract, if he's fired for cause like this, the school wouldn't have to pay him a dime. So I'm guessing he knows he's gone. He's not going to be back to coach. That's for damn sure. But if it's not a Title IX problem, and I don't think it would be because she doesn't work for the university, um, all it is is Tucker looks like shit, and the school would have to pay him. He could make a claim for the entire deal. Um, and that's what Tucker's saying. He insisted that the intimate phone call he had with Tracy was consensual and outside the scope of both Title IX and school policy. Michigan State might fire Tucker for cause if he engages in any conduct which constitutes moral turpitude or which, in the university's sole judgment, would tend to bring public disrespect, contempt, or ridicule upon the university. I would say the way this university handles things uh, brings dis- disrespect from the public, contempt, or ridicule, frankly. Um, I think you basically are going back to the drawing board again. You're going to end up giving Mel Tucker the rest of his $95 million, and I actually think he may be entitled to it. I mean, I don't know what happened in that phone call. I tend to always believe the accuser, but if it's going to come down to just she said, he said, that's not going to work. You have to have some uh, some serious proof to make that uh, to make that fly. But um, I predict, Mich- and you know what, Michigan State, if they go ahead and have to pay the rest of the ninety five million dollars and then bring in a new coach, uh, they deserve that. I don't know how anybody wants to attend that school. Why would why would I mean, even if your kid is not an athlete, just wants to go to school to learn about whatever. And that's their school. If you're a parent, I would not want to send my school to that pile of shit. What the fuck? It is ridiculous. Maureen says he's not going to get the entire amount of his contract. He brought embarrassment upon the university for crying out loud. No way is he getting the full amount. The contract says it's the university's sole judgment. Correct, but he might sue them, which means it's anybody's game. Corey says no means anal to the football team. All right. Hold that thought. Your old pal, Easy has to go tinkle. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. So the lines freaking sucked. It pisses me off. Ah, all right. Uh, otherwise, uh, good weekend. Good weekend. Um, didn't like driving. Didn't like being uh, in the car for too long, but uh, what the hell. The hotel that I was in, I stayed at a hotel from Friday. Uh, Friday night into Saturday. And uh, I think it used to be like a crack house. This was like a, um, back in the day, they they built this thing in like the 1940s or the 50s. uh, Back in this part of uh, Metro Detroit that really wasn't developed at that time. Royal Oak, Michigan. And they had this uh, type of hotel that it's like, um, you just, get in the parking spot, you get out of your car, and then the door is right there. Like a like a motor lodge, old school motor lodge. Well, I it had become in disrepair. It was in a state of disrepair, and somebody bought it and then just 
pumped in a ton of money and brought it back to life. So it's like old school retro, both in the way it's built and its decor. And, oh, my God. I, it had the, like the color scheme of like a Howard Johnson's, you know, like the Miami Dolphins helmet. And uh, was just so sweet. Damn it. Just love those types of places. I prefer those over like, uh, I just happened to come across that. I said, I need a hotel somewhere near the venue. So Hotel Royal Oak. I was like, well, this looks all right. Getting a lot of positive reviews. Ha <laughs> ha, five-star review. I love that place. I'll give it a good a good review. But uh, all was good. And then the interesting thing is they haven't, they don't yet have the, um, they're, they're adding on to it to a place where they can have like a continental breakfast, you know, but they don't have that yet. So what they do is they have like a deal with uh, the restaurant next door. It's a diner. Um, you can go get a free breakfast sandwich and a free coffee. It's like a fuck. Yes. So I go in there and, uh, they're in the middle of breakfast rush. I go, yeah, I, I want to get, uh, she goes, okay. Yeah. You're in, in the hotel. I go, yeah. So it's, you know, they got to make the food and I'm looking in the kitchen and, uh, I, I can tell that they're stressed. I mean, I've seen those faces before when I work with Doug over at Bosco's pub and I'm like, oh man, someone, if anybody fucks up at this particular time, someone's going to get a spatula thrown at their head. Uh, when, when it's like that in the kitchen, when it's the, the, uh, stress level is high because the food orders are just flying in. And then, uh, all of a sudden I heard the thing that's going to put the whole kitchen into a tizzy. Uh, the server is going to get the plated food that's in the window and take it out to the customer. And I hear the line, I said I needed, and then blah, 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 blah. That means someone fucked up. Uh, I needed a whole biscuits and gravy and I needed an egg on top. And it's a half order of biscuits and gravy with no egg. So somebody fucked it up bad. And then I can hear the cook starting to argue. Now, huge mistake. You're wasting time, first of all. Second of all, it does you no good. It doesn't matter what you heard. It doesn't matter what she said. The fact of the matter is it's fucking wrong. And she's not going to take it out to the dude who's sitting there waiting for his food. So shut the fuck up, get the food, and redo it. So he's got to fucking take it out of the window. He's got to uh, add it to it. Add more biscuits and gravy. Fry the egg. Put it on top. Boom. Oh, my God. And I thought that the other guys were going to kick his ass right there. Oh, shit. So that I'm waiting on a uh, egg cheese sandwich. For free, and everybody's pissed off. I'm like, fuck me. I go, I better. And then I'm standing right next to a thing that says tips. Like, oh, fuck. I don't have shit. So in my brain, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, if I can take a few more minutes to get this, maybe I can just go to the ATM. I don't know where the ATM is. What the fuck am I talking about? Maybe I should just take the coffee and leave. No. Well, they did say it's complimentary. Like if I go to the fucking Marriott and they have a a complimentary breakfast, I'm not going to leave a tip there. Uh, Yeah, I know. But still, these people, this is a mom and pop restaurant. Bunch of fucking Albanians. They don't fuck around. I'm going to get killed. So I move away from the tip jar. I get out of the way because there's other customers that are coming in. I'm like, I can get the fuck out of here. Maybe they'll like forget about me. And I think she kind of did because she got like the sandwich. It was wrapped in tin foil and gave me the coffee. And she goes, here, you just set it in front of me. Just turn around, walked away. And I just got the fuck out. No tip. Would you have left a tip? I mean, at least a buck, right? The re- the uh, hotel is a deal with the restaurant, so they're getting paid for it. But it's the tip that I'm worried about. And I love to tip. But I didn't have shit on me. Felt kind of bad about that. Uh, Corey says, nah. Bed bugs 100% guaranteed. No, this place was swanky, man. Uh, 
Nick says, any hotel with direct doors to parking lot are shitholes. I'm telling you, asshole, I was there. It was fucking sweet. Come on. It was a little loud, though. That's about all I'll say. There's people in the parking lot, probably a crack deal going down or something like that. It was nice. Shut up. You know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. Um, I got to take care of some business here. The open and live stream of this show is brought to you by King's Room Barbershop, which I am due for a haircut. This will be the first haircut that I've had in probably a decade from a professional. Looking forward to it. Uh, King's Room Barbershop, three locations. First of all, if you have had your hair cut at places like Jude's, Lady Jane's, or Sport Clips, uh, I want you to try King's Room Barbershop. There's three locations to choose from. Northland Drive, Caledonia, and in the middle of that, Wyoming, Michigan. In Wyoming, they were in Rogers Plaza. They've moved to their own building. Congrats to Colleen and Andy Skyver for a building that they owned, uh, that they owned. They don't have to pay rent anymore to Rogers Plaza. It is at 821 36th Street in Wyoming, just about five minutes away from where the other place was in Rogers Plaza. And it's right next to the costume room. Now, uh, kingsroom.net, this is haircuts for guys, by the way. I went there Friday to get my haircut and I uh, could not do it because it was like, or was it Thursday? It was Thursday uh, because it was packed and I needed to shoot video. So if you go around dinner time, you'll probably wait around 20 minutes tops to get your haircut. Three, four people working there. Uh, so the, those 10 people were serviced very, very quickly. If you go to kingsroom.net, there's a, a price list of uh, what it costs to get your hair cut. It's uh, pretty much standard rates and you will not break the bank and you will get the best haircut you've ever gotten at King's Room Barbershop. Dudes get their hair cut at a place fit for a king. King's Room Barbershop, three locations. All the details at kingsroom.net. Uh, I cannot stress enough about the importance of life insurance. Frank Fuss will give you all the details. Mypolicyshop.com. If you have a significant other and or a significant other with children, it's absolutely crucial that your life is insured. Because if shit goes south for whatever reason, which is unlikely to happen, your family will be taken care of for a long, long time or maybe forever, depending on what you purchase through Frank, a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. Um, I learned very, very early on about the importance of life insurance because my dad did it for a living and uh, I've always had life insurance. The thing to do is get life insurance for you and then uh, rider policies for your kids. I know it sounds weird, but if the kids, something tragic happens unexpected to the kids, you want them to be covered too. You know, the last thing I could think of that would be the worst is if something ridiculously awful happens. I know this is morbid, but it has to be talked about. And then you don't even have enough money to give them a proper burial for fuck's sake. All right. With just a few bucks a month, you can get a fantastic life insurance policy. Frank will help you out with that. Go to mypolicyshop.com. That's mypolicyshop.com. Fill out the form, mention EZ. Or go to buy, B-U-I, insurancehere.com and do the same thing. Fill out the form and you're off and running. Okay. This is the weirdest damn story. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. And in Birmingham, Alabama, um, a high school marching band director was arrested. The football game was going on. The football game ended. The band kept playing. I guess both bands kept playing. They said, okay, 
Game's over. Let's wrap it up. Everybody's going home. And uh, the, the band director kept doing band director things so that the band kept playing. And then they, he was told again, okay, yeah, let's, let's go. People want to go home. And he, he wouldn't stop. It's like that, uh, what's that song by that guy? Um, Don Cherry. Um, the players try to take the field. The marching band refused to yield. Uh, do you recall what was the field the day the music died? Don Ho, Don Cherry, Don Johnson. What the fuck is that guy's name? Don, um, it's Irish. It's Don something. Don McGee, Don McGee. Uh, American Pie. Good pull. Um, fuck. I'm sorry. It's Don McLean. Yeah, and then they uh the guy wouldn't stop, so they 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 tased him. I'm not even kidding you. They like they tased him and arrested him. Uh audio check, video check. This is unbelievable. I kind of wish I could have seen this. I hope that they have audio or video somewhere that we can check it out. Uber is in our newsroom now with details on the arrest of a local high school band director, Ben. Carly, it happened after last night's game at Jackson Olin High School. BPD says as officers were clearing that stadium, they asked directors of both minor and Jackson Olin High School bands to stop performing. Jackson Olin's director complied, but they say minor high school band director Johnny Mims instructed his band to continue. When officers tried to get the director to stop again, they attempted to arrest him for disorderly conduct, but they say things got physical. The arresting officer alleges the band director pushed him and that's when he tased him. Mims went to jail and was charged with dis disorderly conduct, harassment and resisting arrest. Jefferson County School Superintendent Dr. Walter Gonsolin says in a statement, I'm in the process of gathering all the facts and feel it would be inappropriate to comment further until that process is complete. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on this story. Back to you in the studio, Carly. With eBay authenticity. Okay, so I can't tell what's going on here. Could this be, could this be like, um, the band just wasn't done. And then when someone said, Hey, wrap it up, he took offense to that and said, all right, motherfucker. Now I'm going to keep playing because you're being an asshole, you know? Uh, and then it's like he added on time. Every time the cop said, Hey, knock it off. I'm kind of like, uh, Team band director on this one. Tyler says, and he I was thinking it too, but since you said it, I'll say it. The band director must be black. That's the first thing I thought. It must be a black band director. I'm not sure why it had to get to the point where you tase the guy or you threaten to arrest him because he just wants to finish the fucking song. Just ignore him if it's bothering you so much. Tyler says he probably isn't black though because they didn't shoot him to death or shoot him. Yeah, I'd... I, I can't figure out why they, why that happens. Uh, a, a lot of times these, these issues uh, could be avoided if he just, I mean, who cares if he's still playing the music? Why do you have to go up there and tell him to stop? I'd tell you to shut the fuck up too. We'll be done when we're done. Stop playing. That is unbelievable to me. Jesus. All right. Ashton Kutcher is in the news. It's been a rough period of time for Ashton. Rough a uh, couple of weeks. You know, he started out the deal with uh, proclaiming support for Dan, uh, convicted rapist who was getting who got thirty years in prison 
Danny Masterson. By the way, his uh, his wife is Bijou Phillips. I was reading an article with her, and she goes, "I I I, I can't believe this. I, I thought for sure he'd get off." I, uh, and then when he was convicted in May, she's like, "I can't believe this. Uh, I thought for sure it would be like a suspended sentence. I can't even. Come on, he's a fucking rapist." And then the deal with Mila Kunis and uh, Ashton Kutcher saying, "Oh yeah, I mean." Uh, Danny is great. Uh, your honor. He is, uh, this is an exemplary person. He is fantastic. We love Danny. You must give him a light sentence. And this is coming from me, you know, famous person, Ashton Kutcher. Well, immediately things went into damage control. As soon as it was, as soon as it was revealed, the letter that Kutcher and uh, Kunis wrote on behalf of Masterson. This is really bad for them. Uh, adding to the embarrassment, years ago, Kush, uh, Kutcher co-founded um, an anti-child sex abuse organization. Now, Masterson uh, didn't, didn't rape any kids. He's a rapist, but he didn't rape any kids. But uh, Kutcher's credibility is coming to question because he's he's a he's a he's a rape lover, he's a lover of rapists, he's a rapist lover. So they're like, look, man, um, we don't know if this is the best thing to have you in charge of the organization that is uh, anti-rape when you're supporting a rapist. This I don't know if you can figure this out. But there's kind of a bad set of optics here as well. It wasn't bad enough that you're writing a letter saying, hey, I love this rapist. Equally bad, you're in charge. You co-founded an organization uh, that is against rape. It would be like if you were in charge of this organization and then uh, well, someone involved with the organization, their child got raped and you supported the rapist. Uh, he has stepped down now from the board of the group known as Thorn. It's a weird name. He founded this with then wife Demi Moore in 2009. Uh, Ashton now writes, everything's in damage control now for Ashton Kutcher. You know what also happened uh, d during all of this was um, in addition to all the nonsense of him and Mila writing that letter to the rapist saying, Hey, we love this guy. Keep him out of prison was those clips that came out about him, uh, molesting Mila Kunis when she was like 14 years old. It was fucking horrible. Uh, he says, after my wife and I spent several days of listening, personal reflection, learning and conversations with survivors and the employees and leadership at Thorne, that's all bullshit. There, there, there was no listening, personal reflection, learning, and conversations with survivors and the employees and leadership at Thorne because they all hate you because you came out in support of a rapist. Uh, it should say, everyone hates me, so I'm leaving. I will see myself out. He writes, I have determined the responsible thing for me to do is resign as chairman of the board, effective immediately. Kutcher wrote in a letter to the board, I cannot allow my error in judgment to distract from our efforts and the children that we serve. So now he's saying that his writing the letter was an error in judgment. A Los Angeles judge, as we know, sentenced masters in 30 years to life in prison. Um, Kutcher and Kunis apologized the next day in an Instagram video, which we covered for writing the letters, which Kutcher said was intended for the judge to read and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. That is such bullshit. 
if it wasn't intended to undermine the testimony, then why did you do it? Because it's some nice, fun, light reading? You asshole. You absolutely did it to undermine the testimony. Otherwise, if you weren't, you wouldn't be having to resign from this uh, uh, organization that you were part of. Thorn. That's a stupid comment. People are just better off saying, yeah, I fucked up. I fucked up because I'm stupid. Anything, you can say anything. Kutcher said in his resignation letter, first reported by Time Magazine, that he offered, quote, my heartfelt apology to all victims of sexual violence and everyone at Thorne who I hurt by what I did. He just needs to stop talking. He just needs to go away. Every day that this drags on, you just resign quietly. Resign quietly, pretend it doesn't happen, pretend that not a lot of people saw it, sit back for a year and a half, don't do shit for a year and a half, don't say anything, don't do anything, keep your mouth shut, go on a vacation with your hot-ass wife. Instead, you I mean, who the fuck is the PR firm here? Anyone who knows anything about public relations is just shut up. If anybody really notices a month later or two, then maybe you can kind of tiptoe around it, but just quit digging the hole deeper, you asshole. Fucking terrible. Um, let's see. Kenny says, my heart goes all to rape victims except for those my friend raped. Signed, Ashton Kutcher. But he wrote it as, my heart goes all out to all tape victims. (laughs) You asshole. Uh, but But is he? It said that he fucked up. Would we be, uh, if he said he fucked up, would we be as forgiving? I don't know. Who knows? When she says the ranch was awesome until they had to kill off Rooster. Uh, K-Dub says that ranch show they were both on with Sam Elliott was great, or at least Sam Elliott was. Kenny writes, my phone was like, surely you didn't mean to text rape. I'll just change that for you. Fucking phones. I hate that. I hate that. I do that too. Uh, Russell Brand is up Shit's Creek, I guess. Maybe. Comedian Russell Brand denies allegations of sexual assault. uh, Published by three UK news organizations. based on allegations from four women who knew him over a seven-year period at the height of his fame. Brand denied the allegations and said that all of his relationships have been consensual. Uh, Newspapers in the UK said that one woman alleged she was actually raped while three others accused him of sexual assault. One of the women also said he had been physically and emotionally abusive. I hear oftentimes when these stories emerge, when time has passed, particularly I hear this amongst men. I hear men say things like, why did you wait so long to say something? And I can honestly say I have never felt less qualified to come up, well, First of all, to say that, I've never felt like I could say that because I'm extremely, um, I cannot relate. I, I, I couldn't tell you why, why a woman or anyone who's a victim of that would do that. And I'm also not qualified to tell, uh, to try to, uh, make sense of it. It seems like a horrible thing to try to dispute someone who is accusing someone of being raped with that logic. 
I don't know. And I think it's also dangerous business to say, well, it's just a woman being vindictive. And then they get together and then they act vindictive together and they think that people will believe them because they're together. Yeah, I, I can't. I've never really bought into that. That's the same type of logic that was used by any old Joe. You know, oh, yeah, it's always the woman's fault. It's always just because I'm dating some crazy woman. Uh, so as you know, being that I've been close to that scenario from kind of like a an outside but not exactly outside perspective of these things, especially recently. Yeah, I tend to always believe the woman. Always. To me, the, well, this isn't a court. It's me. It's public opinion. You're guilty until you're proven innocent. So if basically if some chick comes up and says, yeah, Eric Zane raped me, I will actually believe them that I did that until I can prove otherwise, which shouldn't be too hard for me. I'm usually just here at home. There's not many scenarios that I could be in where I could be accused of raping someone. By the way, don't accuse me of rape, please. Um, Linda says, I need to watch the documentary on him. Corey says, not many rape opportunities for our old pal EZ. Well, first of all, I would never be physically able to do that. Okay. Uh, there isn't a woman that exists that I could overpower. And I don't think I would be able to get a boner because it would be so traumatic. I mean, you really got to be fucked up to be able to be assaulting a person and then get a hard on. Motherfucker. Uh, Brand denied the allegations and said, "Hell oh, yeah, everything's consensual. Come on now. Um, the Sunday Times said that one woman alleged she had been raped while three others accused him of sexual assault. One of the women also said she had been physically, he had phys- been physically and emotionally abusive. The women said that they only felt ready to tell their stories after being approached by reporters So similar to Mel Tucker, I guess, with some citing brands newfound prominence as an online wellness influencer as a factor in their decision to speak. So I guess basically um, he's acting like, hey, uh, live a clean life and, you know, be mindful and love one another. And then they're like, ah, that's bullshit. He didn't have that mentality when he was raping me or assaulting me. Before the stories were published, Brand posted a video online denying the allegations, which had been outlined in two extremely disturbing letters from a mainstream media television company and a newspaper. He did not identify the news organizations by name. Uh, Amidst the litany of astonishing, rather Baroque attacks. Baroque attacks? I don't even know what that means. I know that that was a, wasn't Baroque a style of music? I had musical man at Central Michigan University. I had that class. Uh, are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. All right. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, at the time I was very, very promiscuous. He says it was always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost, almost too transparent, and I am being transparent about it now as well. Deny till you die. Brand also suggested that the reports were part of a coordinated attack designed to discredit him because of his views. Brand has been criticized for expressing skepticism about COVID-19 vaccines and interviewing contentious podcasters like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is now described as contentious. Replace contentious with boring And that would be an accurate description. There, I said it. Anyone who podcasts for four hours is boring. Fuck, anyone who podcasts for two hours is boring. 
Wait a minute. Well, he should be he should be discredited because anyone who tries to uh, 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 say that the COVID nineteen vaccines are worthless should be discredited. So I'm glad this is happening. Fuck that guy. Uh, in recent years, he's transformed himself into a political commentator and influencer, posting YouTube videos on personal freedom. Yeah, hey, it's my freedom. Shut up and take the shot, dick. Asshole. God damn. Your personal freedom is not getting me sick. So take the shot, asshole. Speaking of which, the new one is ready. I am so, I cannot wait. I, I've got a boner knowing that I will be able to get my shot again. My COVID vaccine, it's coming. By the end of the month, I'm going to have that coursing through my veins, and I cannot wait. Cannot wait. So happy. Thank you. Thank you to the wonderful organizations known as Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson for uh, so quickly. And thank you to Trump. I mean, we owe it all to Trump, don't we? Um, Trump made the vaccine. Uh, that is one thing that we can look, he, 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 operation warp speed. Okay. I made the vaccine operation warp speed. Mm, mm, mm. He did it. I tell you what, you better start wrapping your mind around it because, um, he's winning. He will destroy Joe Biden. And it isn't because he's done anything that's fantastic. It's because Joe Biden is such a huge pile of shit. Unbelievable. The worst president, second worst president we've ever had. The worst was Trump. Second worst, Joe Biden. So the worst is going to beat the second worst. These fucking asshole old fucks. I'll say it. I said it once. I'll say it again. I'm not so much worried about Trump. I'm worried about the fucking maniacs who love Trump. Okay. I will buy more guns because of Trump. Every time, every time something like this happens, I buy another gun. Okay. I have to go pee again. Uh, Friday is my urology appointment. In case you're wondering. Oops. Crazy ass dream last night. And uh, it was one of those dreams where, something was happening to me in the real world. And it was kind of like, um, influencing the dream. I'm sure of it. Kind of like if you're sleeping in a tent and it starts raining in the tent, uh, uh, the water starts leaking on you. You might have a dream that you peed the bed or you're swimming or something like that. I had a dream that I was fishing with charity scam, Mike. And, uh, sometimes Mike's a little careless, so this, this kind of fits. And uh, he kept uh, hooking me with fish hooks. And uh, it was really fucked up. And then uh, I, I'm waking up and Darla is next to me and she's stretching out and her, her dog paw claws are digging into my fucking back. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm uh, 100% convinced that that's why I was dreaming about that. Of, of fish hooks going into me because these claws are digging into my fucking back. Uh, I talked to you about how... Uh, actually, I'm going to wait to get to this last story because I don't have a ton of time and I owe my sponsors. So stay with me here. Thank you to Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. They keep all of the vehicles in the Eric Zane Show podcast household running smoothly and efficiently whether it's scheduled maintenance on your car something as simple as an oil change transmission flush uh wheel alignment they can do it at irvine's everything that you need to keep your vehicle running at irvine's er vines get your cars fixed there if you're in west michigan uh well worth it to get your vehicles to irvine's they have loaner cars which are free for you You can drop it off early with the old key drop, pick it up late with the uh, key safe. 
They put your little key inside of this thing. You put in a code. You've already paid over the phone. Boom. Go get your car. Uh, 616-532-6600. That's 616-532-6600. ERVines.com. That's ERVines.com. Joe Martinez, A&E Heating and Cooling. Uh, You're starting to see all these ads from all these other jokers on TV talking about, oh, yeah, get your furnace tuned up. They're right. You should get it tuned up, but you should have it tuned up from Joe. First of all, he's cheaper than everybody else. You do need this done. You see Joe twice a year, once for the AC tune, once for the furnace tune. Uh, Call now and get on the schedule, 616-516-8579. For A and E heating and cooling. Okay. 616 516 8579. If you are one to just fire that thing up and not get it looked at, you are rolling the dice. And with it being sub zero for several days during the winter, that's when it's going to go south on you and it's not going to work. And your wife's going to hate your guts. Get it looked at. Okay. 616 516 8579. By the way, I got a um, got an email from a guy about uh, we were talking about the unions on Friday, and I played for you the the idiot pipe fitter who's also in Congress, and he was uh, going after uh, Teamsters leader, whatever it was, and his big thing was, um, yeah, you know, I started out my company with like three pipe fitters, and uh, then we grew and grew and grew, and uh, now I've got. 60 pipe fitters and uh we're not union and uh the reason he's making excuses as to why uh the union doesn't work for him and uh the union was uh uh, set up to protect people in that scenario uh so that workers uh are given the uh, work protections that they might not have otherwise and for a litany of other reasons why the unions are so important um and this dude the senator that we play that video the guy was like, no, nah, man, I, I I, don't want union employees. So then he starts bidding on jobs and undercutting the price and getting jobs that otherwise union employees would have access to. And he's, he's winning the bids because he's going cheap. And um, so, all right, he's like, I should be allowed to do that. And he was, he was getting intimidated and they're like talking shit to him. He didn't like that at all. Well, So he's basically a union buster. Paul writes this. I just finished listening to the show the other day. Just curious if you have ever been part of a union in your life. Easy. It seems like you like the idea of these unions sticking it to the man. Uh, And I I wouldn't describe it as sticking it to the man. I would describe it as uh, fair representation. These companies are represented by uh, uh, high powered attorneys, uh, in their in their organization, uh, why can't the union be represented? Why can't these workers be represented? Represented. Uh, you like the idea of these unions sticking it to the man, but that goes against how you operate. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how so? He writes, "Easy is unhappy. Easy does what it takes. He drives limo." Eats fries. I mean, makes fries. Shouldn't you be paying to be in the fry cook union? That might be one of the dumbest arguments uh, with no teeth to it. I think I've ever read ever. Yeah. A part-time job making French fries at my buddy's restaurant, a mom and pop restaurant means I am I bidding on jobs? No, dummy. Shouldn't you be paying the fry cook union? Why does pipe fitter Senator guy have to be a union shop because his trade has union represented workers? Uh, yes. I am sure he started his plumbing business out of his truck. A and E's employees are in a union, right? My guess is not. Now he has a big workforce that chooses to work for him and are paid well. So they are the enemy. Well, wait a minute. Let's back up here. A&E is a family-run business with like two people in the field. That's not the same at all. 
We're talking about a guy who started the same way Joe did. All right, great. You're a non-union guy uh, uh, doing his thing, uh, uh, checking on furnaces. He's not bidding massive jobs. This guy says, I work for a uh, a bigger man. I don't know what he means by that. A, a bigger man than Joe Martinez, and we are not union. I don't pay anyone to represent me. I represent me. Well, good luck with that. I wasn't happy with my pay. I expressed I expressed it was, it was taken care of. He, he writes weird. I expressed it was taken care of. I am not anti-union, by the way. <laughs> Well, yes, you are. You're absolutely anti-union. I have a good friend at a big union HVAC shop, and it works for him. Another friend from trade school sheepishly told me he was recently hired by a union company. I interrupted him and told him how happy I was for him. Their wages push our wages, and our wages help theirs. We have two people involved. They have three. No big deal. Union reps need high-paying jobs, too. I believe unions were absolutely necessary back in the day. Stories of people pissing their pants for fear of getting fired on an assembly line. Fuck that. Social media, phones, and cancel culture. No way anybody is getting truly mistreated. I I can't speak to that. I don't know how you can. At the end of the day, if I am being mistreated, underpaid, or taken advantage of somewhere, I don't have to work there. And if I am not fulfilling my job requirements, they do not have to employ me. This is America. I responded. I said, yeah, well, the point was that pipe Senator dude was not a small shop. He's bidding massive gigs for a reduced cost, which undercuts the whole system and damages the larger unionized workforce whose families suffer because Senator pipe guy has that mentality. Small time shop with two employees cannot do that. I don't know. Just seems to me like he was speaking for a lot of people there. Um, Ryan writes, calm down, big fraud. When I was a bagger at Meyer 25, 30 years ago, I had to pay union dues on my five twenty five an hour job. Well, how much? Of course you had to pay union dues. You're part of a union. You didn't have to take the job, asshole. Uh, Kenny writes, this guy writes longer messages than I do. Yeah, but he actually had a point. When you write, it's like, oh, God, just spare me the fucking minutia. I don't get those messages anymore. And I'm so, my life is so much better without them. Uh, Nate says, my dues are 40 bucks a month. IMKO says, what does the union do for a minimum wage worker? Did you get benefits as a bagger? Not sure. Ryan says, I got no benefits. Was a part-time high school gig. Well, there you go. Our non-union shop just got cut to 40 hours. No overtime for anyone. Screw those greedy assholes. Fuck. Yeah, man, I don't know. Anyway, that strike drags on. That's going to get ugly. I showed up to that event yesterday on Friday in Detroit. I, I'm on stage and I, I, my first words into a microphone, I go union strong. And like no one responded. And I went, fuck, that was lukewarm. Bad start. Fuck those guys. Jesus. All right. Um, but the update drew Barrymore. Remember she was doing the whole strike breaking thing. She's like, yeah, uh, I, I am all supporting my sisters and brothers when that thing started. And then after a handful of weeks with the writer's guild strike, she's like, um, yeah, we're going back to work. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to go back to work. 
Um, Bill Maher did that same thing. Uh, he's he's coming back, but there is an update on Drew Barrymore. But first, this Bill Maher thing. He said, "Yeah, uh, fuck that. We're going back to work." I don't think um, that. I don't know. It's it seems to me like Bill Maher is kind of Teflon. Um, he can say and do just about anything and it doesn't matter. And, uh, to me, that's a, that's a real, uh, a sign that his character is shit here. Um, he says real time is coming back. Unfortunately, sans writers or writing. It's been five months. It's time to bring people back to work. Well, no, it's not. You got to understand these, all these writers, they don't fucking make the money that you do. All right. They're they're doing this for a reason. And uh, the entertainment industry is banking that pieces of shit like you will do that. And then others will follow suit. And then that will ruin the strike. And then that is it. And then these people uh, suffer more. Now, you're a rich guy. It doesn't really matter to you. But all these people that are fighting for more, which they should get, um, you're completely undermining them and ruining their efforts. Mars show is an HBO original. HBO is owned by CNN's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, though there were hopes a deal between War, uh, WGA, um, the Writers Guild of America, and production studios could be reached after Labor Day, uh, the strike is still in full swing because I can guarantee you the studios are like, just wait, just wait. They're going to start to crumble. And they are because these are fucking assholes. The uh, Drew Barrymore's of the world, and the Bill Mars of the world. Uh, Mar is a member of the WGA and he is breaking the strike. Um, Writers Guild said it is very, very difficult. It's difficult to imagine how real time can go forward without a violation of WGA strike rules taking place. WGA will be picketing the show. Yeah, I can't believe that you would, if you're Bill Maher five weeks ago, why did you support it then? Just don't support it. Just break the union entirely. I'm also surprised that people don't get their asses kicked. I mean, if you're going to have a strike, if you're a union and people are going to break that strike, you got to start to beat somebody's brains in. Okay. If someone's not getting injured, you're not doing it right. That's what needs to happen. That's how strikes were. And that's why they worked. Because if some dumb motherfucker decided he was going to break the strike, the next thing you know, he's missing an eye or his legs broken in half. Nowadays, nobody does shit. So whoever's in charge of the Writers Guild, you got to hire some fucking Hollywood muscle, preferably a gay guy, and people need to be sodomized. That's the only way you will have success with this. If Bill Maher can shit twice as fast because his asshole is twice the size of what it was uh, for breaking the strike, then you And then you actually take a picture of the asshole and you post it to Facebook and say, this is Bill Maher's asshole. It looks like a Folgers can. This is how it is right now uh, because he broke the strike. Uh, Maher said he is not willing to lose an entire year and see so many below-the-line people suffer so much. Well, I mean, that's it. This is how it works. Uh, let's see here. Sherry Shepard and Jennifer Hudson are set to return. So all these people who are like, oh, we support you. We support you uh, for a little while. Drew Barrymore caved. First, she was like, I support you. I support you. And then she says, we're coming back. We don't support you. And then they, uh, she lost a couple of gigs for like the National Book Writers Association or some shit. She was supposed to speak or host some event. And everybody said, well, we're going to pick at your show. And now she's, she's rethought it. She's back to being on board. So she can't make up her mind. But she's doing better than Bill Maher. God damn it. 
There's like these fruit flies throughout this entire house, and I can't find where they're coming from. It's annoying the shit out of me. Play, play a drinking game. Spot the fruit fly. Um, she isn't bringing back her show after, after all. The, sh- the decision comes a week after she was criticized for saying that the Drew Barrymore would premiere today. Her comment, I've listened to everyone. I'm making the decision to pause the show's premiere until the strike is over. She may have saved herself. Because I'm serious. If you fucking break a strike, I don't know how you how you get that back. I mean, at least that's the way it's supposed to be. Once a scab, always a scab. She says, I have no words to express my deepest apologies to anyone I have hurt. And of course, to our incredible team who works on the show has made it what it is today. We really tried to find our way forward. And I truly hope for a resolution for the entire industry very soon. Yeah, I think that they're actually on board with this. Like the uh, strikers like, all right, you're you're lucky you fixed it. Um, I don't know how many people are on that show. But if you're really, really concerned, um, I would be, I would support my workers by, you know, giving them a stipend. You know, the union gives you some type of, uh, uh, money when you are on strike, like in the auto workers strike, uh, each auto worker is getting like five to $600 a week, which I mean, it's not terrible. Um, she's incredibly wealthy, I think. Drew Barry more net worth. I always wonder how um how accurate these net worth things are. So she's worth a hundred and twenty five million dollars. I, I didn't think it would be that much. Um she could very easily supplement to some degree everyone's income on that show and, uh, and earn it back somehow. So if you're really concerned about it, fucking pay those people. Shut up. Is that unreasonable? Mitch says drew Barrymore is doing it for the staff that is impacted. She could do what John Oliver is doing where he is literally doing stand up and paying the staff while the strike happens. That's what I'm talking about. I love that. That is so cool. I did not know that. He's doing stand-up to support his staff. That sounds fantastic. I love that he's doing that. Very, very cool. All right. We're winding down here, but before I go on this show that has no writers... Uh, If you are in the market for a mortgage anywhere in the U.S., reach out to the number one uh, mortgage distributor in the entire United States, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, number one uh, in Michigan and the U.S., 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505. See the difference. Call Mario. Talk to him directly. Please mention my name. Whether it's your first mortgage or your 10th, whether if you're just getting money out of your home to pay off a high interest credit card bill or whatever it may be, 231-332-6505, call today. Rick from TC Paintball. I don't know how he did on his paintball tournament in Chicago over the weekend. I hope he did well. Uh, We are waiting on Rick for paintball war number 23. We'll get started on that as soon as Rick is ready. I'm sure it will be a fall theme. Paintball War number 23. Let's get it going. If not, uh, anytime soon, book your own event at TC Paintball. Find them online at tcpaintballgr.com. Your asshole of the day. Hmm. Uh, It's got to be the cop that tased the band director, right? I 
cannot figure out in that story any scenario that would allow, that would cause the cop to tase the band director. Uh, It's brought to you by TC Paintball, the asshole of the day. Um, That is going to do it. Cop who tased band director is your asshole of the day. Thank you to TC Paintball for sponsoring the asshole of the day. All right. Busy day again today. We got the Patreon bonus podcast coming up a little bit later on. I got to take Milo to the vet. He's an ultrasound. Uh, He's got like this big lump where his one eye used to be. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Ah, whatever. Throw another thousand on the pile for the vet bills. Sign up for Patreon for free. Seven days. That is a free trial. Patreon.com. Slash air safe. Thanks for being here. Have a good one, folks. Bye bye.